Let's see some of the frequently used terms and terminology in system design. So basically in the system design lectures, you will heard these terms multiple times. Like one of the terms is latency, like uh, you might have heard this, what is the latency of a system and how to calculate the latency in a system. Then we have the throughput, response time and then the processing times. So these are the four concepts that you heard multiple times during the system design sessions. So let's try to understand this with the help of example. So consider this is my client and this is my server. So basically the client will communicate with the server and how client will communicate with the server by using the STD protocol. Like the first thing is the client will do the TCP handshake with the server and once this TCP handshake is over then the client will send the request to the client into the server and this request is the HTTP request that is sent to the server and then server will do processing that is all the computations in the server side and then this server will send the response back to the client and then this connection is over. So this is the simple HTTP communication between the client and the server and let's say this is my first request that sends to the server from the client and the time it takes is T1. So basically this request will go from client and receive at the server time and this will take the complete time of T1. Then this time is T2 that is the time taken by the server for processing the request. And then this is my T3 that is the response that is sent by the server and it will reach to the client and this time is T3. So we have T1, T2 and T3. T1 is the time that has been taken by the client to send the request and correspondingly it will receive at the server end. So this time is T1. Basically this is the time that has been taken in the network. Then we have the T2 that is the time taken by the server to do the processing of the request and then this is my T3 that is the response that has been sent over the network to the client. So T1, T2 and T3. And now this latency is T1 plus T3 that is the time that is been taken by the request to go from the client towards the server and plus the time that has been taken by the response that is sent by the server to the client. So this T1 plus T3 is the latency of your systems. So it is the expectation of any system then it must have the low latency. Sometimes this question is asked in the interview like how you design a system with a low latency. So to design a system having a low latency, the first thing that you need to do is you need to use the HTTP slash 2 protocol. So HTTP slash 2 is the major revision of the HTTP protocol used by the World Wide Web. So basically every HTML file or you can say the CSS file or the JavaScript file in your site required the number of HTTP requests. It means for every HTTP request send the file details to the client. So let's say if you are using some CSS files or the JavaScript files or multiple HTML files in your website, then for every response, this server will send all the details of each and every file to the client browser. So if the number of files are more, then it will, the latency will be obviously a more. Like let's say if in your web page, load the five external CSS files, let's say five external CSS files or let's say it uses the five external JavaScript file, then this HTTP slash 2 protocol combines your five CSS and five JavaScript file into a single separate file. So now our HTTP request left with just two requests instead of the 10 requests for 10 different files. So that's what the advantage of using the HTTP 2. So in HTTP 2, several requests can happen at the same time and combining file will have the less impact on the loading time of the website. So eventually your latency will be reduced in this case. Similarly, we can use the CDN. So what is this CDN? So this content delivery network helps to bring the resources closer to the user by caching them in multiple geographical locations around the world. So basically, once those resources are cached, 
a user request only need to travel to the closest point that is the closest CDN to retrieve the data instead of going back to the original server each time. So if you are using the CDN in your system, then the latency time will be reduced a lot. Uh, in our lecture, we have covered the complete detail about the CDN in this particular assignment. So please go through it. And then next we will use the browser caching. So this browser caching will cache a certain resources of the website locally in order to help to improve the latency times. So basically, it decreases the number of requests back to the server and store most of the stuff in the client side only. Like let's say when you visit a website, your browser takes pieces of pages and store them into your computer hard drive. Now some of the steps your browser will store are like images or logos, pictures, backgrounds, HTML files, CSS files, JavaScript files. All these are stored in the client side only. In short, these browsers typically cache what is known as static contents in the browser itself. So rather than going to the server, the browser will get the details from the local cache only. So all these informations like images, HTML, or you can say the static contents are stored in the browser or you can say the cache in the client side only. So browser typically cache all the static contents. It means the part of the website that do not change from multiple visit dates. Those are the static contents and all those contents are stored in the client side only. And this will eventually reduce the latency time of your system.